Hello, so welcome to my first ever video. Um, my name is Rebecca, my channel is called Ari Gaming, um, and today we're here to play some Crusader Kings 3. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so I wasn't going to be starting as any of the like suggested default rulers. Um, what I was gonna do was um, a bit more of a challenging campaign. Um, so obviously 1066 you have the succession crisis in England, um, you have three main claimants to the throne, you have Harold Godwinson, William the Bastard or William the Conqueror as he was later known, and Harold Harderada or Harold Harderula. Um, but what I was going to start as is this guy. Um, so this guy is... Uh, so this guy is from the family, the House of Wessex. Um, and obviously if you know anything about uh, English history, um, in the what was it was it 10th century 9th 10th century um, during the Norse invasion of England um, you know that uh, Alfred um, the great of Wessex um, inherited the throne uh, and really defended against the uh, Norse invasions. So if we have a look. So there we are. And where is Alfred? followed House Wessex. Um, King Edmund. Um, his title went to Edward the Confessor um, and it was when he died that really kicked off the war for um, the English throne um, because he didn't have an heir, no children. Um, so there wasn't a clear line of succession. Um, and so you have uh, Harold Godwinson who claimed that he was selected as the successor. Um, you have uh, William of Normandy and Harold Hardrada. Um, I believe the Danes also had a claim. Um, Yeah, so arguably there's a bit of a Jon Snow um, type deal here where Earl Edgar of Warwickshire is the, you could argue, the rightful king um, at this point in time. Uh, we do of course have a press claim on the Kingdom of England. Um, so what I'm going to do is plays Edgar and hopefully uh, reclaim my right, um, 
press my claim upon the Kingdom of England. Um, obviously, I have to wait until the uh, current uh, wars for England are settled. Um, obviously, we only start off as a single title count, um, so it's it's not going to be. Obviously, we can't just press our claim for England straight away. Um, we'll have to bide our time and play the long game essentially. Um, so, first thing I'll do is select a lifestyle. Do we're not married? Um, so, one thing I always like to do. Um, when arranging a marriage um, is for male heirs, specifically the, um, if it's the current character or your primary heir um, when you have a male child, is kind of prioritise the congenital traits um, because really one of the things I enjoy about Crusader Kings 3 um, is that you, it, it's not just about building up your kingdom or your empire, it's about building up your dynasty um, and you tend to um, fare better if your lineage, if your dynasty has good inheritable traits. Um, so you can see things like uh, pretty or handsome, um, gives you a nice diplomacy advantage, um, being intelligent or quick uh, gives you an advantage to everything. I would argue that that is perhaps the most desirable. Um, you also have things like uh, fecund. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, picture of a rabbit. Obviously, the implication that they breed like rabbits. Um, then you have like hail and strong. So like is a good bonus prowess. Um, and obviously you can have multiple um, at the same time um, so really what I like to do is is kind of play a bit of play around with the genetics and, and try and get a uh, a bloodline as it were uh, try and get it so that my dynasty has several good inherited traits and then that just gives you bonus straight off the bat before you've even done anything else. Um, so we don't have the decision yet, um, presumably because we're not, uh, we don't hold high enough um, rank title, um, but when you get, um, if you get to the point where you have a character that has uh, all three of the main traits or one of the um, traits from the three main branches being um, like looks, intelligence and uh, health I guess if you want to say that, like robustness. Um, if you have all three of those um, plus one of them in the highest tier so that would be the uh, like beautiful Hegelian or genius um, then you can make a decision um, which increases um, I can't remember if it increases the chance of inheriting traits or if it just like gives you an extra boost uh, to your bloodline um, but no doubt we'll find that uh, when it becomes available so let's have a look here. So there's no real um, strong alliances that we can forge, probably just because we're only a count. Um, so we're not going to... it's rare that at that level that you'd be able to marry someone in a royal family. Um, let's have a look. What traits have we got? Bum, bum, ba -dum. Yeah, so as well as good traits, you can have bad traits. Um, so like Baron would be the opposite of Fecund. Um, like Wheezing and things like that would be the opposite of um, like Robust. You can have like Fragile as well. Um, so really, you want to try and um, 
get the positive traits. I mean, some negative traits can be handy, um, like giant gigantism um, is one of the main ones, I would say, probably. Um, I mean, albinism can even be desirable in some circumstances as well. Um, albinism doesn't really give you that much of a penalty. Uh, things like scaly, though, um, candy. Um, so I'm going to go with Elisabetta. Elisabetta? Um, Catholic Italian, but she has the two traits. Um, hale and comely. Um, ideally, I do like to prioritise the intelligence ones, but if you can get two for one, um, you know, then your children, my children, will have a chance of inheriting two different um, traits, maybe even both. Um, see how it goes. Negotiate an alliance with Countess Margaret. Uh, this will be my sister. Um, I might hold off on that for now. Uh, what else can I do? Um, so you always want your uh, bishop um, or well your religious person on your council. You always want them to have positive um, opinion of you because then you get um, they contribute levies and taxes um, so the religious rulers essentially will um, have control over the like bishoprics um, scrolling a bit here uh, so like he has control of the bishopric of Coventry um, so he will get taxes and levies um, and if he has a positive opinion of me then he will contribute some taxes and levies um, the same as landed leaders uh, within my domain obviously I don't have any landed leaders because I'm just a count um, but if for example I became the duke um, so this is my liege uh, Duke Edwin Elfgarson Mercia, and you see his vassals. Um, so there we are, there's my sister. So we all contribute um, gold and troops essentially um, to him that he can draw upon. Um, yeah, so let's uh, see. Uh, one thing you can do, which I always like to do, um, is appoint your bishop or whatever it is as the court physician. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, the Their learning stat um, basically influences how effective they are at their roles. Um, for the clergy, um, and if you have them serving as a court physician, um, then they can gain traits, uh, medical traits, which will boost their learning. Um, so while you may have other options within your court, for example, this guy has higher learning, so in theory he would be a better candidate for court physician um, but if I have my bishop as my court physician then if he gains like doctor traits um, then that will boost his learning and in turn make him a more effective clergy uh, she's in my court okay, uh, yeah so he now has a positive opinion of me so now he's um, so now I'm claiming taxes and lobbies for him low-ranking, um, like with being only a count, obviously I don't really have a huge amount of members in my car, and they're not of a great, um, they're not the best at what they do, um, 
like, I mean, these are all alright. I mean, 10 for Steward is the best I've got. Um, ideally, it would be a bit better. Um, but you just have to go with what you've got, really. Um, let's see, what have we got for army? Some of the skulls and like footmen. Uh, I can't really fart anymore at the moment. So it's fine. though my sister because she has no children I am the primary heir to her titles so because she's my sister I can negotiate an alliance and she will accept um, but what I could also do is if I kill her before she has a child I will inherit her title, so that's probably what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, so at the moment it would only have a 27% uh, sorry, uh, success chance and a 42% chance of remaining secret. Um, what I can do is invite other people to help. Um, what I can also do is get my spy masters a support scheme, so just by changing it from disrupt schemes to support schemes. Uh, it's already gone up to 42% success chance. Um, and then if I just progress the game a little bit. So now I have married. Um, and one of the good things that you have a spouse, especially if you have a live-in spouse, um, so, as if your spouse also holds land, they won't be a member of your court. But if they don't hold land, they will be a member of your court. And they can give you uh, stat buffs, essentially. Um, so the default is a cis ruler, um, which gives you a little bit of each. Um, so, you, so you get plus one diplomacy, plus one marshal, plus one stewardship, plus one intrigue, and plus one loan. Um, so generally that is the, the better one just to leave it at unless you need help with anything in particular. For example, if you have, uh, if you're over your domain limit, you might want to focus on managing domain. Um, but what, yeah, what you can do is change their focus. Um, so for example, if I want her just to support me with court intrigue, then I get a plus 10 bonus. And then already just from getting my spy master and my wife to support me, it's gone, it's gone from a 27% chance success rate to a 52% chance. So it's almost doubled, essentially. Um, suitably extravagant wedding celebration is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation so you can either raise that tax at royal aid duty to throw a party um, is the justification for it of course you don't have to um, or you can let them keep the money and gain prestige boost but we want the money 
we can bribe them and then they will help so because he's a bishop he's slightly more expensive oh, no. that's just okay so he's, he's fairly sad um, yeah so obviously this is the success, uh, success chance that it would help scheme power so the scheme power essentially just means that it doesn't take as long so he has the best success chance. So if we get him. Cool, he's joined. And now we have a 90% success chance. Um, so if we can get one more person, um, then it will max out at 95%. and then I will inherit a title and then we'll have doubled the number of titles that we own. Um, meanwhile my wife is pregnant. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. You always want an heir, ideally. Um, so my scheme is close to fruition. Swift communication is key. Key. I have an especially clever pigeon which Burn. I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, her bishop could use to send an urgent message to me here in Warwick if the need arises. But how should I get the bird into the castle of Stafford? A local bird trainer could deliver it as a gift. I could send the gift myself. Countess Margaret couldn't refuse, which is too risky. Um, so. I get a local blood trainer to deliver it as a gift, 70% chance of success, and it will gain a messenger pigeon, plus 7% success chance. Um, if I send the gift myself, it will also increase the success chance, but I will become involved. Um, Yeah, I mean, so what I could have done is not recruited as many people and then something like this would have given me a, a boosted chance of success, um, but there's no guarantee that these kind of opportunities will always come along. Um, but then I'm inclined to deliver it as a gift through the local bird trainer anyway because although it won't really make the chance of success more than it is currently um, if something happens in between that seven months um, like for example the scheme is discovered or one of the agents dies um, then this will act as a kind of buffer which is dismissed anyway um, but it was only 15 gold so it's, it's not like it was a lot of money particularly um, but yeah, you always want to make sure you have some kind of um, heir. Obviously, male children are better heirs, um, simply just because of the fact that um, the majority of the marriages in this game are patrilineal. Um, 
So the the woman will go to live with the man, um, and children from part of his dynasty. So children from the his heirs. Um, you can have matrilineal marriages where the man will go and live with the woman, um, and the children from part of her dynasty. But then they will be her heirs and heirs to her, her titles rather than yours. Um, so yeah, I mean, as long as you have an heir, I mean at the moment our sister is our heir, but ideally we'd want our own child to be our heir. Um, and then if you unexpectedly die, if you're assassinated or, I don't know, you get cancer or something or die in battle, um, then if you have an heir, then it, it, it just ensures the continuation of your dynasty. seen them before where uh, as far as gained a train usually just get like a little bonus or something or they like level up on their lifestyle um, yes we have an air oh no oh well, that's annoying oh well I was hoping we'd get a positive trait um, seeing as I don't have any negative Traits. She doesn't have any negative traits, so it's unusual that he would get a positive, uh, a negative trait. But I guess not impossible, obviously. Uh, so what we're we gonna call him? Um, yes, yeah, let's just leave his name at Adred. Why not, Adred Edgerson? ways that you can murder someone, it's just random, the one it picks. Um, this one, recent upset amongst the peasants of Stafford, one of my agents has presented a unique suggestion of taking care of Countess Margaret. Margaret. Uh, with the cotton in the right pockets and agitators on every corner, we could stage an entire riot while the count Countess is passing through the streets. So, either time for some good old fashioned mob rule, this is far too unpredictable. Um, in which, if you choose not to go ahead with an assassination attempt, it essentially just you lose some of the progress and, and try again. Essentially, um, yeah, may as well go for it. Cool. So she did. Uh, Countess Margaret is dead, being trampled by her own subjects. The agitated peasants went wild seeing their liege riding through the streets and saw both her and several of her knights from their mounts beating them to death. Many peasants were hanged, including my agitators, which means it cannot be traced back to me. Um, so when you try and go ahead with an assassination attempt, several things can happen. Either you can succeed or you can fail. Um, but also, you can your scheme can be discovered, or it can remain a secret. Um, so you can successfully assassinate somebody, but have your scheme be discovered, so then people know you're the one behind it. Or you could be. Um, Unsuccessful, and people know you tried to kill them, um, and obviously vice versa. Um, so this is really the best outcome. She's dead. We've inherited her titles, and everyone's none the wiser. There we go. An unfortunate accident. Oh no, my baby is sick. Poor little Adrid. 
is no end to the tears. Desperately want the midwife to ease my worries, but her furrowed brow makes everything worse. Your son is not gaining weight as he should. I take good care of him, my lord, but in the end, his life is in God hands. Hush now, Idrid. Please don't cry. Get the treat. Sickly. Severe penalty. So obviously not ideal that he's ill, but it's not the end of the world. Most of the time they do just recover. Um, sweaty and tired and in need of food, a long day of training with the troops coming to at an end. As we search for a place to camp, we spot an old and abandoned castle in the distance. Laughing, I declare that that is where we will make our camp tonight. Sun is setting and with every step towards the ruin it looks more ominous. Before long the soldiers whispering about ghosts. Let's venture inside. I'm sure this is treasure to be found. Or well, let us raise our tents outside. It's time to rest. Yeah. Let's have a look. Darkness, dampness, and desolation reign inside the castle, and all traces of life are gone. Uh, peering up, can you get this? Uh, if I can get more out. Peering up decaying stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down spiralling steps, I see only darkness, reaching far down into the ground underneath the castle. So we can either search deeper floors or face our fears and go down into the darkness. Um, so if we go down, face our fears, minus 10 stress gain and plus 1 prowess for 10 years, or we can search your floors and get some money. So let's do that and drink some bubbles. So we only got 15 gold, um, could have been better. gold so we can start building um, some buildings. Generally what you build is buildings, you generally don't build other stuff. Um, so at this point obviously we have two main concerns that we would need to address by building. Um, and that's kind of the two main purposes generally speaking in the buildings. Um, taxes and employees. Um, so if we build something like farm and fields, that's plus five tax per month. Uh, if we build something like a barracks or military camps, it gives us more levies. Um, so generally, if you just focus in on building uh, and growing your economy. Um, then the purely money route is probably going to want to be your priority um, because if you are collecting more income each month then you'll be able to build up your um, holdings quicker um, so if you're like, oh well, I don't have much troops, I want more troops, going to build barracks, that's fine um, but if you built like, farms and fields, then it would you wouldn't have to wait as long before you could build the next building. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and build some farms. Um, I mean, 
mean each has their own drawbacks. If it's an elective, then your heir will inherit all your titles. Um, so the uh, general succession law that everyone will start off with is partition. Um, so all children inherit equally. Um, obviously, if most cultures have a male preference, so any male children you have will inherit your titles equally. Uh, so if I had another son, one would inherit the Eldon of Staffordshire, one would inherit the Eldon of Warwickshire. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. But then when my character dies and I play as my heir, I will only have inherited half of the titles that my current character has. Um, so that can be annoying if you spend ages building up your um, kingdom, like the territory you control, and then you go and die and your kingdom gets cut in half. Um, can be really annoying. Um, but with a elective um, method of succession, um, I believe you inherit all of the titles from your predecessor, but then there's no guarantee that it will be even any one of your. Uh, own dynasty. Um, so see, we're third um, with the voting. Um, we're a different dynasty, I mean, it's the House of Wick, House of um, There's no guarantee, even though it would be your preferred choice to win. So as I say, benefits and drawbacks for each. My wife is pregnant again. So yeah, see the uh, battle for England. So Harold Godwinson is busy uh, fighting off the Norse. In fact, a cold force retreat. Um, Meanwhile, William is conquering the south. Um, so that's kind of how it went in real life, to be fair. Um, Harold Godwinson went marched up north um, to hold back the uh, Viking invasion, um, Battle of Stamford Bridge. Um, which is the Stamford Bridge um, in Yorkshire, not, not Stamford Bridge in Chelsea. Um, yeah, successfully defended, um, but then immediately turned round, marched down south for William, and um, that was probably one of the contributing factors as to why he lost in that there wasn't really any time for recuperation. They fought one war, then immediately turned around, marched straight down south to fight William and got beaten. Um, yes, that's how it went in real life. Um, cool, so we have another martial opportunity. Uh, do, 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 so we can either choose to become a specialist with our chosen weapon, or we can end the monotony and become a jack of all trades. Um, so generally with this, um, you can have this kind of event come up uh, more than once in your lifetime. Um, if you are a marshal, um, focusing on the martial lifestyle. Um, so generally I would say that the first time it comes up, um, you would want to go with the top one and become a respected expert because that's a bonus for life. Um, you Some bonuses from events you get are for limited time, 
this one is for life, so I will always have plus two prowess as a result of this. Um, so I'm going to go for that. Um, and then if it comes up again, I'll go for the other option, um, which I believe was just prestige gain and martial experience. Um, yeah, we've got a plus two prowess bonus for life now. So that's pretty cool. Stop swaying, Bishop. He has a positive opinion of me, and we don't really need him to um, have a better opinion of me. Um, instead, oh no, oh. poor little Edred. Had so many hopes for you, my sweetest child. All the things you would learn, experience, and do. There were so many possibilities, a whole life to live. Maybe you would have had children of your own one day. Now, none of those things will ever come to be. Oh. So that is the risk of the, the sickly. Um, yeah. Cool, so. Um, mental breaks because of it. Uh, bereavement are slightly different to regular mental breaks. Um, so, also if your stress bar fills up, you get an extra level of stress. Each cumulative level of stress is worse. Um, so, really, it's something you want to try and avoid. Um, but yeah, uh, stress gain because of bereavement is slightly different because you also have grief. Um, so, for example, this would arguably be the best choice. Um, some might say, but you gain frozen grief and that's for life. Um, whereas if you... Because you're essentially just, like, you're not dealing with the grief. Um, so it's frozen. It, stays with you. Um, but there are multiple ways of dealing with it, so I can either confide in someone, in this instance my wife, um, I gain managed grief but it's only for five years, and again the trait confider which is actually a, a positive trait, or I can have a drink to remember him, which negates the grief penalty, but I become a drunkard, um, so there's a payoff, so objectively this is the best one. Short term grief penalty um, with a, a positive trait, let's go for that. Um, yeah, well, so, so sway my spy master now. Um, really you want your spy master to have a positive opinion of you. Um, if they have a negative opinion of you, they are less inclined or less likely to disrupt schemes against you and they may even join schemes against you. Um, if your spy master has a negative opinion of you and someone is trying to kill you, they may be able to recruit your spy master, which is really you really don't want that. Um, you want your spy master to be protecting you, not working against you. Um, so let's see. Um, so that's one of the best ones that you can get. Minus fifty percent has its belly cost. Um, this makes waging war cheaper. Sun. No negative traits, but no positive traits, so it is what it is. Ethel Bold. Mm. Not sure I really like Ethel Bold. Edwick. Gamel. Kinnahelm. Ethel Weld. Yeah, uh, Harold. 
Girth Edmir Edred Edmir Yeah, let's go for Edmir Edmir Edgerson My son Yes, it's a shame that we don't have any um, Alfred had intelligent, but then he didn't pass that on to Duke Edward. So we have inherited traits within our dynasty, but not not any close relatives. And yeah, so you can see here, looks like William of Normandy is going to claim England. Harold's going to hold off the Norwegian invasion but Looks like he's not going to be able to hold off William, although Wait and see, really? You never know? Have some more enough money to build. Hey. Some farms and fields. Let's do that. when your people on your council have a positive opinion of you. either way. Cheshire. Uh, it's not the 
say we've got cheese, that's a bit annoying, but... Especially when it's like um, different sects, different branches. Um, I mean, so it's technically a Christian faith, but as you can see, it's hostile. And with Catholicism and Orthodoxy, and I think even Coptic, um, you have a head of faith, so you can get, you can ask for money off them, which is always nice. Um, and it avoids you being crusaded against, which is also a nice bonus. Um, yeah, yes. So really, I want for Staffordshire, especially. Okay, well, I mean, it's one of my places, isn't it? So I would rather have professionally rebuilt walls than crumbling walls. It does cost some money. Come on, Harold. Come defend your subjects. Place my steward first. Studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was astonished to learn about the exploits of Hannibal Barker during the Second Punic War. Known as the Enemy of Rome, Hannibal's crowning achievement was the Battle of Cannae, 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 where his army of roughly 50,000 outmaneuvered and encircled the larger 86,000 strong Roman army. Surrounded and unable to retreat, only 3,000 Romans survived Masca. <laughs> so, I can either gain Aggressive Attacker, Logistician, or Flexible Leader. Um, I'll go Flexible lead because generally, um, because there is an event where you have the opportunity just to gain aggressive attackers, so hopefully you get that. And then, yeah. Usually calm child when the others play the wild games. Edmund often withdraws to some silent corner. He does not speak a lot, but I can tell he is always thinking about something. I mean, he's three years old, like... <laughs> so he's pensive, so either stewardship or learning would be a good um, lifestyle choice for him. Stewardship is good. Um, 
increases your domain limit, so it's good for if you're wanting to rule a large um, territory. Um, if you're wanting to have direct um, control, no, not control. If you're wanting to hold a lot of titles, there we go. Um, whereas education is is good for, um, like, if you're wanting to along the life of your character and um, maybe have a look so you've got the medicine focus scholarship focus theology focus so whole of body is, is good for if you want to live for a long time theologian is good for if you want to convert a large area um, to your religion um, and if you have a look though the entirety of England is Catholic. I mean, Ireland is insular, but don't want to be going to Ireland anytime soon. Um, but then you do have places in um, like Eastern Europe or in Spain where you have um, large parts of, of different religions. But we don't really need that one uh, here. So yeah, I'll probably go for stewardship. It's a bit more immediately useful for my child. Oh, thank you, Harold. You actually uh, alleviated me. That looks nice of you. Sister. Um, I don't need to have two lots of them. Um, what type of infantry are they? Heavy infantry, okay. Um, so got some skirmishes, some heavy infantry. Um, ideally, you want to spread because then you can count a different types of infantry. Um, so, I'll probably get some either bowmen or some spearmen. Um, pikemen, but the, the type of infantry is um, and obviously if you are you want some siege weapons, if you are attacking a fortification um, that is any level above 3 um, so you don't need siege weapons if the fort level is 3 or below but if it's above that you want siege weapons otherwise it's really gonna um, it's really gonna impact um, and, and slow down your siege um, of them um, and just really draw it out um, our liege has decided that we are no longer fit to be the steward of mercy here how dare he! Oh, okay, but he's gonna make a spy master. That's cool, I guess. Um, so you get bonuses if you're part of your leash's court. Um, so ideally, you would like, because we're part of the martial lifestyle, ideally we would want to be his martial. Um, martial being spelt differently. Um, and then that would offer us a, uh, a buff to our monthly lifestyle experience. But, I mean, I guess it's I guess it's just nice to be involved, you know. Oh, cool. So, both of the wars of England are over. King William won. Cool. Oh dear, he 
does look a bit scarred up, doesn't he? to a far level 10. Um, so it's rare, um, unless you get quite deep into a game, that you will encounter anything over 10. Um, I mean, you do have uh, trebuchets, which are effective up to 15. So sometimes metal breaks can be good. I mean, rarely so, but here we have a chance to gain the trait athletic, which is always nice, um, especially if you're martial lifestyle. It's only for a year, a year's nothing really. Yeah, that's another reason why you want your uh, council members to have good skills, because otherwise, the worse their skill is, the more likely some bad is to happen. So an enemy might get, so someone else might get a claim on my territory. Um, Neighbours might lose opinion of me. Might shoot on an enemy trace. Uh, rhythm taken aim and struck so many times. I thought nothing could upset my rhythm. Upset my rhythm. As I take yet another gallop down the practice range, a commotion I cannot see fully see makes my horse rear up. For an instant, momentum keeps me pinned to the back of the horse as it starts shaking. Then, as if time is flowing slow, I can feel myself becoming dislodged. So I can either attempt to calm the horse or die for stable ground. Yeah. Oh dear. Thrown to the hard packed ground, the pain of the impact rushing through every bone in my body. Stable boy comes running just a little too late. So now we are wounded. And aggravated wound. Yay! Fun times. But hopefully our composition will help remedy that. Oh, 
Luckily, it's a daughter. Yeah, daughters are especially useful for forging alliances. So you marry them off to somebody's son, make an alliance with them. Um, obviously, as I said before, if you have more than one son, um, it can lead to the breakdown of your kingdom when you die. But like for example, if I if I held the Duchy of Mercia, then if I had a second son, my first son would inherit the Duchy of Mercia, but my second son would only inherit counties, so they would become my vassals. So it's not as bad. Um, but over time, it, um, if, if your kingdom repeatedly gets divided up like that, it can be quite harmful to your your monthly income and the amount of uh, levies available. Um, oh, forget. Yeah. Sure, why not? A bit worse for wear, don't it? So who wants to participate in the tourney? I think that's not a terrible trait. Could have been worse.
So my liege has gone to war with King William. Seems like a good idea. <laughs> she is with child and I should be overjoyed. However, she has been acting strange and I cannot shake the feeling that something is wrong. She claims I am the father, but she has lied to me many times before. Why should I work?
this is potentially going to last for a long time. siege weapons, it can breach the walls, which lowers the amount of time between siege events, so it essentially just speeds up from siege. Oh, so we don't want him to be generous because that will lower our monthly income. He can be diligent, or he can be patient. So because we are focusing on stewardship education, we want traits that will complement that. Uh, so diligent is the best one of those, although it will make us stressed, but, you know, raising a child is stressful. Yeah, so we probably didn't even need to get her just involved. Agatha of Athenia. 
see if that's how you say it, Ruthania. Also nice and simple deal, and also one plank more, so you should take that. Powerful vessels, I mean, they're not always the best. So, for example, I could do a point Ake, Ake, um, as my marshal, but powerful vassals, uh, you want to try and keep them on side um, in case any decide to join a faction against you, uh, because then they can. Um, uh, contribute quite significantly militarily to those factions. Uh, first, I've got a simple footman, a full wolf, stepping onto the train field, although he's even a threat at first. Could claim clear that he would be unable to stop his wild and vicious strikes from hurting me, disarming, disarming him suddenly, became a matter of life and death. Tried not to show my relief when his sword finally hit the ground. Yeah, I mean, I can always use. Um, people in my cart. We run some of this guy? No. Um, cart demand conversion. So if somebody shares the same faith as you, um, or if somebody doesn't share the same faith as you rather than they get an opinion penalty towards you. Um, so it's always helpful to try and have people of the same religion as you if they're in your car. Um, but we can't do that because he's zealous so he won't change religions. So the best we can do is just recruit him. Um, so what I might try doing now then is looking to get a claim on Mercia. Um, so we could try and take Herefordshire first. Um, and then focus on directly on my um, Lieges titles. So this is what I was talking about earlier with the chance to, great, uh, to gain the aggressive attacker. Uh, so I might gain a martial lifestyle perk. That is aggressive attacker. 82% um, chance. Let's go for it. Got it. Nice. So that's quite handy um, when you're fighting. Um, obviously they lose plus 25% of, the, of their people. Calm or zealous. It's not really giving me any any stewardship um, traits here. It says um, probably not going to offer the best um, education trait.
but we'll see. I mean, my stewardship is, is not bad, so hopefully that will help. So he didn't end up with this guy. It's interesting. Usually, if you're wounded for so long, uh, then you end up with this guy when it heals. Uh, yeah. My son. Cool. So now it's kind of essential that we get the Duchy of Mercia before we die. we'd essentially just have to either denounce one of our children or when we die and become Edme we ha would have to fight Edward for half of these. So you could end up um, having to have a limb amputated, you could end up becoming a eunuch. Um, there are some really quite unpleasant um, consequences that you can have from that. Um, yeah, so I always figure it's just to play you safe, you know, choose the disease reduce the disease and symptoms a bit and then hopefully you just recover um, with time. I mean like if we died as a result of this illness that would be a disaster because um, you can see with the succession um, we would lose two of our titles to our second born son which would not be ideal considering that our ultimate goal is to reclaim the English throne. Okay, not ill anymore. That is uh, nice to see. So if it goes to high crown authority or absolute crown authority then you are prevented from waging war um, against, I believe it's just against somebody who's also within the same realm um, without a hook on your liege 
um, which can be extremely annoying and frustrating. Um, so that's usually when either you would, well unless you have the intrigue lifestyle and can fabricate hooks, then that's when you would um, create a liberty faction to lower crown authority and then if you're successful then the crown authority is lowered and you can go back to waging war whenever you want essentially. Fair of shag, good. So there is a possible side effect, you can get a claim just on the duchy. Um, obviously the higher their bishop's uh, learning skill, the more likely that is to happen. Um, back in that area it would be helpful because otherwise you have to essentially um, take a majority of them, uh, so far at five counties and then usurp it. Um, so hopefully we can avoid having to do that. Nice. Mercia, um, and then from there, just kind of building and consolidating our power base. Um, so to usurp it, we would have to uh, can you usurp a title belonging to your liege? Can you usurp a title of the same? Uh, da, da, da. So we would have to go to war eventually um, to get the Kingdom of England, but because it's a pressed claim, um, our children will inherit that claim. So there are three kinds of claims. There's pressed, Unpressed um, and do, uh, implicit. So implicit claims are um, essentially the claims that your children get. Um, so, so this guy, Sven Frogotson of Zealand. I hope I said that right. Probably not. Um, so his son has an implicit claim on all his titles. Um, I would say is the Aldi, um, but he's the only legitimate son, so he has an implicit claim on all the titles. Um, so um, uh, essentially means that he is in line to inherit them. Um, he has a right inheritance through succession. Um, we have a press claim, so our children will inherit a press claim. We have an unpressed claim, so if we went to war for the Kingdom of Ruthania, for example, that would turn into a press claim, and then our children would inherit that claim as an unpressed claim. Um, 
So any unpressed claims you have, if you don't press them, then when you die, that's it, your children won't inherit them. Um, but if you have pressed claims, then your children will inherit them as an unpressed claim. Edmare's almost done with his education, so... Right. Off his dike is there, because probably it goes from Chester through Shropshire down to Herefordshire and Oxfordshire. Offers Dyke, which is a long ditch flanked by a wall of earth constructed by the Anglo Saxon King of Mercia to defend the border towards Wales. This raised earthwork offers an advantage to whoever stands on the side of the wall. Does any attackers have to fight an uphill battle for the I did not know that. I was going to say the files were just like this point. families, um, not higher families though, um, like instead of having the option to just marry uh, and form alliances with counts, I'll have the option to do it with like dukes and other people. quicker um, and once you have enough piety and the head of your faith has a high enough opinion of you um, you can ask them for gold um, so 
always nice to have one going. And again, I always like theatrical pilgrim. Because the Akrak rules of the same faith have a plus 15 opinion of you. Um, typically, that will always include the head of your faith because they hold titles. Um, I mean, the majority of religious figures hold some form of title. Um, I mean, even our uh, bishop holds titles, so he's a theocratic ruler. But then it also means that because the Pope has a higher opinion of us, it'd be easier to get money off him. Um, and money is, as I've said, money is useful. What's Holy Path? Yeah, so you gain a load of piety um, that can often up your devotion skill because it's so much. And Pilgrim, yeah, plus 10% monthly piety, plus 5% faith opinion, and that's for life. So once you do a pilgrimage once, you get that bonus forever. And yeah, gain level devotion. I'll get a head of faith of gold, spend piety, get money. That's what we like to see. in debt anymore. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? It's a bit rude. Yay. siblings but okay so Emmanuel is in line to inherit Matilda's titles He doesn't actually own titles, he just, he's not London, he just has claims, right, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. has a much higher learning skill, which means that he's much more likely to produce a claim on the duchy as a whole. 
rather than just that individual county. So one is pregnant again. It's also pensive. even more titles on succession. Yay. Yay, so much fun. So, yeah, let's have to get the dirty. Should be alright. education, um, there are a number of things to it. Um, the main things are your skill in the specific subject and also your education level I believe. Um, so if one of your children is being educated by somebody who has So, for example, with Elfgif, uh, there were two people, they both had the same diplomacy skill and they both had the same education level. Um, so it was basically just a toss up between the two. Whereas 
where my reinforcement route for two years, so if I go to war in the next two years, that'll be handy, which I might do, depending on if this results in a Dutch claim or not. Uh, I'll donate some money, I'll gain some piety, he'll think a bit, 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 uh, a bit better of me, and uh, might be able to get some money back off him. an adulterer, and a sodomite, and a drunkard. Oh, this is the, um, the first one's son. No, that's the first one's son. This is the second one's son. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting that he inherited the, uh, Kingdom of England. Or did he? Yeah, he did. He just inherited it straight from him. As I inspect the stables, my gaze is drawn to a mare, kept away from all the others. She throws her head and stomps her hooves, displaying her powerful hindquarters and well-arched neck. This creature has the best of confirmations and the worst of tempers. I have never seen such a war horse before. But the stable master insists that she is impossible to train. I am not one to back away from a challenge. I gain a lifestyle perk and the horse won't become my own steed. Or I could sell the... Or get my stable hunt to uh, tamer. Yeah, I will do it. Horse bends her ears back as I approach. Her disregard for me crystal clear. First meeting is important to earn her trust and respect, and I need to decide how to go about it. So I could either go with a steady hand, uh, gentle and move slowly, or <laughs> bring forth the apples. Everyone has their price bribe her with apples. Um, got high prowess skill, so gentle hand, uh, steady hand even. Likely to work well with high prowess skill or a ball personality. Uh, it is a mighty feeling. The powerful horse follows my every whim. Now that I have, I have earned her trust, she seems almost fond of me. <laughs> Tamer of horns. Gain one martial lifestyle perk, or I can gain one martial lifestyle perk and gain a war horse. Yes, I can do that. War horse, a name inspired by history, or a name inspired by mythology. Uh, ah, King Arthur. Achilles, Achilles' other horse, or the ancient Greek god of the North West. History, King Charlemagne. Alexander the Great, Gnaeus Sayus, 
Hussein Ibn Ali's or Lubu's war horse. Uh, let's go with King Arthur's horse. Yes, he is a British figure, so it makes the most sense. He ended up the King of Norway, Harold Godwinson. What's going on? happened. Um, yeah, Soul of Mercy should be mine. Oh, so now I just need the money. That is a unique decision that you get from uh, King William if you um, claim the British Isles, as it were. So each, um, obviously each lifestyle focus branch offers different ways, uh, uh, different perks and different ways of playing. So Gallant is um, kind of chivalry, I guess. Um, like you have the prowess, and then knight effectiveness never back down, which is handy. Um, minus twenty percent. Friendly uh, fatal casualties plus five advantage, Kingsguard, but then it's like courtship, so like romance, success, uh, marriage acceptance, uh, spouse opinion, G 
gallant, yeah, traction opinion. So it's yeah, it's like being a good knight. Overseer is is ruling. Um, so you have things like dread gain, control growth, um, ensuring that occupy uh, that your territories have an advantage in battle. Um, yeah, and then strategist is essentially just. Uh, waging wars, you have like things like moving faster, improving um, troop screen, troop toughness, troop pursuit, um, minus retreat losses, um, plus siege progress. Yeah.
Elder's forces have joined the fray. Go for direct confrontation. So let's go for... Let's not end the botany. Show me how it's done. Show me how it's done. Cool. So. Some new alliances. Uh, yeah, those will... 
probably only disabled because I've only just taken him over. Um, so yeah, going good so far. Um, so in what, uh, 27 years, managed to go from just Count of Warwickshire to the Duchy of Mercia. It's pretty good. Um, probably leave it there for now. Um, and then next time, um, it'll just be building and consolidating our power base. Um, don't necessarily have to reclaim the throne of England with Edgar, although perhaps would be nice, seeing as Kanagio is rightfully his. Um, Edma will inherit that claim, um, so we can always just wait and pursue it with him. Um, otherwise, ooh, can I fight her to court? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so she will join our court in the next episode, and then we can marry her off to someone for another alliance, um, which will be nice. Yeah, so I'll leave it there for now. Um, so yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, um, please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you feel so inclined, you could also like the video, drop a comment on it. Um, it'll no doubt help with all the algorithms and that. Um, but yeah, cool. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.